Hello, welcome back to Grip Notes. Uh, this is the fifth in the series. Uh, today I'd like to introduce you to the rest of the crew via something that we call a call sheet. The call sheet is put together by the assistant directors to tell us how we're going to proceed through the day, the kinds of things we might need uh, to get everything done during the day. On the front there's a general crew call. Um, this won't be your actual call time. You always want to check and find your name on the back of the call sheet. The uh, back of the call sheet has the names of each of the departments and the names of the people working in those departments in their specific job titles. Uh, at the top we have the UPM and the line producer. They're the ones that put the money together uh, and figured out where to distribute it in order to get the day's work done. So you might not run into them, but if you do, say thank you because they're the ones that said, yeah, we need another guy. And uh, we're going to go ahead and give you the manpower you need. Also, the assistant directors are listed there, the first and second assistant directors. The first assistant director is going to be the one that stands right next to the director and yells out, we're rolling, and coordinates us all uh, into the fine family that we are. They're the parents uh, guiding us along the day so that we'll get the day done. Uh, second assistant director is the one that made this call sheet. He usually knows exactly what's going on and what's going to be happening next, and so good information from them. And then the production assistants. Now, a lot of the times you'll be introduced to a production assistant because they'll come up to you and say, shh. And it's not because they're leaking, it's because that they're trying to maintain a quiet set for the uh, director or assistant director to do their work. Uh, they could be rehearsing, uh, they might be rolling, which would be very embarrassing for you, but uh, that's what the PAs do. Understand that PAs are probably the least paid and the hardest working folks on the set. They come in and unlock the doors and they're there to lock the doors when you leave. Um, and it doesn't pay extremely well, but it's a stepping stone into becoming a producer or an assistant director. So. It's good to be nice to the PAs because someday you might walk through a door uh, to get a job and the person you're going to talk to is sitting there at, the, uh, at a desk and they say, Oh, I remember you. I met you when I was a PA. It was great working with you. So keep that in mind when you uh, work in and around the PAs. Uh, next department listed is the camera department. Uh, that's the director of photography. Uh, there's usually operators, camera operators, uh, self-explanatory. And you've got the first assistant camera that usually heads the department as the key grip or the uh, set lighting, uh, chief lighting technician is for their departments. Um, and they're right next to the camera pulling focus and making sure that the cameraman uh, is getting all of the things that they need. They set the stop and the aperture and, and take care of the physical camera needs. Uh, also in their department, the second assistant camera puts down the marks on the floor and slates the camera. And usually there's some data wranglers that uh, now uh, work with the finished product, the chips, keep them cataloged, keep them safe, get them to the editor so we don't lose the day's work. And uh, sometimes there's video listed in there to do the live feed transfer so that the director and the cinematographer and the script supervisor can all sit and watch the lives going goings on to uh, see how it's, it's working. And uh, occasionally we'll, we'll be providing shade for uh, those folks via the camera department. They'll come and ask us whether or not we can put a pop-up up, up. sometimes locations does this. But we do arts and crafts for the, the camera department and obviously we're working closely with them. Um, their boss is my boss, so uh, camera department, that's what they do. Uh, grips, we already know. Uh, you'll see under the rigging key that sometimes it's OC, which means on call, and you'll see a few other people on the sheet, which means that they're close by and we can call them, but they're not going to be on set. Um, so something good to know when you're looking through the call sheet. Uh, next, of course, is our set lighting brethren and sisters. Uh, these are the people we work the very closest with. They're the ones that are going to be bringing in the lights and uh, setting them up. So when you see someone uh, moving a light, you're like, oh, must be a set lighting technician. Probably a lamp operator in that case. Um, and we will be going in behind them with a ladder or we'll be leveling the stands for their light. Or um, once they're done setting the light up and the set lighting chief lighting technician has aimed the light, then we're going to be diffusing it and we're going to be using our flags to shape it. Um, so get along with the folks from Electric because uh, they are going to be who you work with the most closely. It's good to know their names. Um, next on the list is effects. You have physical effects and you have visual effects. Physical effects are in charge of blowing things up and guns and uh, rolling cars and um, they'll be putting the small fires in the fireplaces when there's not really a fireplace because it's a, a set and they'll be running water in the kitchen because it's not really a kitchen. Um, so those are the people you talk to if you see a water leak or something going on around the set. And uh, also you'll see that they'll be putting smoke in the air sometimes for the uh, cameraman to get a particular look that they want. And 
and sometimes you'll see them standing there with a the smoke machine. You'll be like, hey, you need a couple apple boxes. Uh, they appreciate that because they're going to be there all day monitoring smoke. And so usually we'll set them up. And they do physical fabrication, so it's a good idea to uh, get to know who these guys are in case we need something welded or uh, if we need a particular nut or a bolt or a specialty tool. They have actually more stuff in some ways than the construction department has, so that's what happens with physical effects. Visual effects is, is the uh, green screen, folks, and so that's the only time you'll see them is when we have green screen, but what they do is when we put a green screen behind like a uh, window on a stage, they can then in post put in uh, the actual city with the cars moving and all the stuff outside the window to make it look like you're actually in Chicago or wherever you're supposed to be. So that's what vis uh, the uh, visual effects folks do. Uh, next on the list would be hair, makeup, and wardrobe. We don't have a lot of dealings with them, but their job is to ensure that the actors look good uh, before they come out into the set, after we get you know, everything lit. Uh, they're the first line of defense for the actors, and then we make them look good. Um, not a lot of dealings with them particularly, but uh, they throw great parties, so it's good to get to know the hair, makeup, and wardrobe people. Uh, next on the list would be the art department. This is the uh, production designer that gives you the sets to light. The art director that puts the things in the sets to make it look like it's real. Uh, the on-set dressers that are the ones that actually physically place everything. The only people from their department that show up uh, on the set is the on-set dresser, and there's usually one. We always help the on-set dresser because we're the ones saying, hey, can you move this couch and, and this refrigerator? We need to put a camera or a light there. And then, you know, there's only one person there, so we usually help them so we can get the day done. Uh, we have a lot of fun with the on-set dresser. Construction is part of the art department. We don't see them on set too often. They built our set walls. Uh, they put in ramps and such for us when we're on location. Usually our rigging department's going to be working closely with the construction department, um, but they know how to shape wood, which is a good thing to uh, have on your side. In case you need something made for the grip department, so... Uh, they have the right equipment to do all that. Uh, next on the list would be props. Uh, these are the people that put the physical property stuff in the hands of the actors. So an actor is dressed and in makeup and wardrobe walking around the set that the art department made, but they have a book that they're going to read, or they have a watch and a ring that they wear, or um, anything that, that's in physical contact with the actors is going to be provided by props. And props also fabricates a lot of stuff on computers. They make badges and that kind of thing. I have a cinematic community card that I still use today that was made by a prop master. It's one of my prized possessions. So, uh, Very creative folks in the prop department. Um, next on the list would be uh, sound. Uh, when we're working with sound, um, usually they don't ask a lot from us, but they might need to put a ferny pad over a, a refrigerator that we can't shut off, or they might need to fix a, a squeaky door hinge or something like that. Um, there's usually a sound mixer who's running the board there. They head the department. There's the boom operators that uh, put the microphones out over the actors or put the lavaliers on them. And then the cable wrangler that, uh, you know, patches the in-between between the, the boom op and the, and the mixer is a cable wrangler. Uh, a lot of fun in the sound department. And uh, usually some of the happiest people you'll find on set. They have a good job to do and they do it well. Um, next folks that I have listed here are locations. Locations, uh, pretty self-explanatory, but when we're on location, we've rented a house or a space from someone, and their job is to make sure that when we leave, it looks as good or better than it did when we got there. So whenever we need to put uh, some screws in a wall to put something up, we need to talk to locations first about that type of thing, and we also want to let them know if we ran over the sprinkler head uh, so they don't have to find out later uh, by a mistake and uh, look embarrassed about that. So. Make sure locations knows when you're working uh, if something needs to happen or if something goes wrong because uh, it only helps them to make sure we can go back and work the location another time. Uh, next on the list is transportation, and these are the folks that get us to and from the set in the vans. Um, a lot of times they get a bad rap because it looks like they're just hanging out during the day, but those same people were working at 4 o'clock in the morning to put the trucks in place and uh, then drive us back and forth. and so. Uh, we love the transportation department because they're the ones getting our trucks close enough so that we don't have to carry that gear uh, all the way three blocks away. Th those people in locations are our backbone in uh, making sure that we move efficiently. Um, 
Somebody that I didn't have listed here, but you're going to want to know about uh, are the craft service folks. A craft service was usually uh, put in place to help the other crafts, meaning they would help props or they would help a grip or they would help sound. Um, nowadays, a lot of the time, their job is solely to provide food between the meal breaks. And uh, so that's where you get your coffee and uh, your donuts and uh, you know, your water and everything else. Um, so good to know the folks in craft service. Um, also listed on this is uh, specialty notes and this will give you an idea of what's going to be happening out of the ordinary during the day. So uh, for instance if you see that there's a crane on there or there is a green screen it lets us know before it's too late and all of this has been discussed in an interdepartmental meeting um, but it's just a reminder uh, these are some of the things that are going to happen so you'll get clues as to the specialty things that are going to happen during the day if you look at the specialty notes. Sometimes those are found back on the front of the call sheet, but uh, on this case they were on the back. In uh, this corner you'll see the sunrise and sunset. That's good information because if you're coming in at 6.30, the sun comes up at 7.30, you know you're going to need your flashlight to start with and maybe a jacket. So uh, good to have that information on the call sheet. Also tells you the sun is going to go down at some point and hopefully you have your daylight exteriors done by that time. So uh, good to know the actual times of when that happens. The meat of the uh, call sheet on the front there is what we're doing, the actual work we're doing that day, how many pages we're doing. Usually a page equals a minute worth of screen time, but not always the case. Uh, for instance, Gone with the Wind, Atlanta Burns was an eighth of a page, which I'm sure it took a little longer to do and actually occupied more screen time. So not always 100% accurate. You'll also see which actors are going to be doing what, if it's supposed to be day or night in the scene, and uh, a brief description of what the scene involves. So I hope that this has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, as usual, please contact me at infinitygrips at gmail.com. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next installment of Grip Notes. Thanks for joining me.